WFYI podcasts are brought to you by TechPoint, presenting the 25th annual Best of Tech Mira Awards, recognizing digital innovation across Indiana, April 26th at Old National Center. More, including how to nominate, at miraawards.com. This is WFYI News Now. It's January 11th, and I'm Abriana Heron. On today's show, we'll find out what two groups, the Indiana Black Legislative Caucus and Prosperity Indiana, are focused on during the legislative session that kicked off this week. A plan to reduce the number of domestic violence cases for Black women in Indianapolis. And listeners wanted to know why incumbents are so powerful in politics. Funders know this. They want to support someone who they think is going to be elected in office, not someone who they think will probably lose. Those stories coming up. But first, two interim leaders have been appointed in follow-ups to recent stories we've covered here. The first from Center Grove Schools. The board appointed an interim leader last night, just days after the former superintendent suddenly resigned amid a state investigation. Assistant Superintendent Bill Long was picked to run the Johnson County School District. Board President Scott Alexander says the district is in good hands. The board is confident in Dr. Long's ability to step into the role and provide the leadership necessary to keep our school corporation moving forward. Last week, the school board announced longtime Superintendent Rich Arkanoff faces an investigation from the State Board of Accounts and law enforcement. Arkanoff retired the same day. And Mayor Joe Hogsett has chosen Christopher Bailey as the interim chief of the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department. The decision comes after Chief Randall Taylor announced he would not continue in the job. Bailey has been with IMPD for 25 years and is the current assistant chief. He's been appointed acting chief to ensure a smooth transition, but has removed his name as the permanent candidate. The ongoing search for a new police chief continues. Some news out of the State House as lawmakers kicked off the legislative session this week. The Indiana Black Legislative Caucus says housing should be more accessible, affordable, and equitable for all Hoosiers. And that's the focus of the caucus's agenda in 2024. Caucus bills include measures to prohibit housing discrimination against active duty and veteran military service members, to ban foreclosures based on medical debt, and to double the tax deduction for renters. Caucus Chair Earl Harris Jr. says housing is an integral part of the American dream. Owning a home is about far more than having a roof over your head. It's about giving Hoosiers a sense of security. Some of the bills have come up before, notably Representative Cherish Pryor's legislation to ban discrimination in housing appraisals. Pryor says some members of the Republican supermajority don't seem to think such discrimination is real. I think it's, you know, unfortunately the, the legislature has not taken the, the issue as seriously as they should. Harris did say that House Speaker Todd Houston acknowledged the need this session for further work on housing issues. And another group's priorities this session. Prosperity Indiana says it will focus on economic and social opportunities for all Hoosiers. Violet Cumber Weiland reports the organization is dividing that focus into three key areas. Andrew Bradley is the policy director for Prosperity Indiana. He says the organization focuses on feedback from its members to determine legislative priorities. Bradley says members are currently concerned about supply, access, and habitability of affordable housing. So we're going to be working on legislation that helps strengthen the enforcement of health and safety standards when it comes to housing and ensure that unaccountable out-of-state investors aren't able to drain the resource of housing out of communities and for individuals. Other policies the organization hopes to focus on are those that help with asset building and consumer protections for all Hoosiers and community development resource policies. For Indiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Violet Comber Weiland. A local nonprofit unveiled a plan to reduce the number of domestic violence cases for Black women in Indianapolis. The Domestic Violence Network, or DVN, revealed its three-year plan called Beyond Equity on Tuesday. The plan aims to examine why Black and African American women are disproportionately affected by domestic violence. It's estimated around 29% of Black and African American women are victimized by an intimate partner in their lifetimes. Jimmy Bridges is a domestic violence survivor. She says Beyond Equity is a great start to addressing the root cause of domestic violence in the Black community. 
But for domestic violence survivors, we need to go beyond that. We need equity. A key component of the plan is to work with Black women in the community, like Bridges, to lower domestic violence instances. Mayor Joe Hogsett attended the event in support of the new plan. I want to encourage all central Indiana communities to rally support of this new plan and behind this new initiative. The DVN is focused on changing systems that lead to violence. This is the group's sixth community-wide plan in central Indiana. And for our final story today, why are incumbents, current political office holders, running for re-election so powerful? It's a question our audience has been asking, so Brandon Smith looked into the success rate for incumbents in the state legislature. Over the last six state house election cycles, 2012 through 2022, incumbents have won about 97% of the time they appeared on primary and general election ballots. Why? Political scientist Laura Wilson says there are a few reasons. State house elections are what are called low information races. Voters generally don't know as much about the candidates, so basic name recognition, in which incumbents typically have the advantage, goes a long way. She says there's also the financial advantage of incumbency. You're more likely to get funding because as an incumbent, you're a proven winner. And with incumbency advantage, and funders know this, they want to support someone who they think is going to be elected in office, not someone who they think will probably lose. There's also the competitiveness issue. In Indiana, Wilson says many general election races at the state house don't feature much competition because of the political balance of the districts and because state lawmaker as a part-time position isn't necessarily an attractive office to seek. For Indiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Brandon Smith at the State House. To ask your own questions and inspire more stories like this, go to ipbs.org slash civicallyindiana. That's all for today's episode of WFYI News Now. Our podcast is produced by the following people who live in your community. Darian Benson, Drew Dodlin, Kendall Antron, who composed the music for this podcast, and me, Abriana Heron. Our news director is Sarah Neal Estes. If you liked today's episode, remember to subscribe and share. And follow WFYI on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube to check in on our newsroom throughout the day. Thanks for listening. We'll be back tomorrow. WFYI podcasts are brought to you by TechPoint, presenting the 25th Annual Best of Tech Mira Awards, recognizing digital innovation across Indiana, April 26th at Old National Center. More, including how to nominate, at miraawards.com.